Hey, what's up, beautiful Bailcast listeners? Welcome to another episode. I am Gio. And I am Bart. And uh, I'm happy to announce that today's episode is powered by Hong Kong milk tea. Hong Kong milk tea. Which is the shit? What? I was going to say the, one of the hardest it's words. It's not really sponsored by this song. Oh. One of the hardest words that I've ever learned to pronounce that, that I still don't think I could pronounce correctly. Worcestershire Shire? It's even harder than that. So Hong Kong. Are you ready for this? Hong Kong and Cantonese, it's Hern Gong. Her. Hern. There's an N at the Hern. end. Hern Gong. Hern Gong. And I don't even know if I said it correctly. But Man, there's, have, a, but lot there's of... a weird like R sound that's not really an R sound. And then also when you take a shower, it's Chen Lung or something like that. You do one that's like a, sh- like it's a, it's like a, I don't know. You do something with like show. Oh, with a hand in Mandarin? Show. Yeah, it's like show. Show. Yeah, like say say uh in a sentence say I have, um, I have um, I don't want it to end with show. So oh my hands are big. Well, my left hand is big, but then my right hand is small. Oh shit! Never mind. That sounds good. Cause it just sounds like you had to start to go show show. The other one's hard. Oh yeah. No yeah. There's like. The turn and the hand gong. <laughs> oh my god, you have the taika eyes. Really? <laughs> yeah, you know when he goes like this? Yeah. And like it pulls down his skin? Yeah. He's so fucking funny right now. You know some of the things that he does? I don't know if it's um like that mirrors us. I don't know if it's genetic. Like we naturally have certain like like quirks or mannerisms. Or he watched us and then he learned it. For example? Like this. Like us, like messing around. You know, Maybe it's like, just a feeling. Like you know how sometimes you feel stuff, so you just you you act out what you feel. Yeah. So like when you get the chills, right? Like you can just probably go like, and then you get the chills up and down your spine. But then, at least for me, I just go like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like People I have like Taika. <laughs> I have my face. Yeah. Kind of go with whatever it is that I'm feeling. What I love about him is that he's so express. He's in this expressive uh, phase right now. So when he's sad, he's like. Hmm. And he crosses his arms how, like a cartoon. How is it that kids can like frown so like cartoon like? I don't know if it's all kids. I don't. I haven't seen all kids do it. But, I see most kids. But his do is that. like a big whoop. Yeah, that most kids have that. So I don't know where. How is it? Because they don't have muscle. I mean, obviously they have muscles, but like, is it their teeth? They're not big enough to like feel fill it, or is it like after puberty, like our jawline gets bigger, so we just have maybe after puberty you're supposed to man the fuck up, so you're not allowed to <laughs> frown anymore. <laughs> Well, girls, too, when they frown, they can't make it cartoony like that. Really? <laughs> that's fucking funny. I don't know. Because maybe that's what puberty is for, is to, like, strengthen your jaw. Well, girls like... get it, too. Because I used to have, like, such a... I mean, I... You could frown before? No, just, like, my jaw developed differently. Oh. Can um, you frown? Let me see. It doesn't go like a cartoony yeah, it doesn't, frown. Yeah, Taika's is, like, straight up like a cartoon. Yeah, I think kids have that. What I was going to say with the Hong Kong milk tea is, so we live in Glendora and it's not really known to have very ma- many Asians out here. Yeah. You okay? Yeah. Okay. So a lot of the Asian food out here is seriously subpar. It's pretty bad. It's it's sick. If you go <laughs> in a bad. pho restaurant and you see that they serve Kalbi. Yeah, it's run the fuck out. You're like, what? And our most... Uh, closest pho store has that. Yeah. So the the Asian food out here is pretty fucking whack. So um, we're also spoiled, by the way. Like there's some places where like um it'll be like like because when me and Joe do shows, like we travel all over the country, and there'll be places that literally serves Thai food and sushi, and it's popping. Like people oh, love it's it. Good because it's just so. Oh, and it's not good. It is good or it's not good. From my standards. It's not good, but in that city standards, since they don't really have that much Asian food, they're like, oh, oh it's I can get pad thai with some like albacore. Hell yeah. You know, it's just, but for us in, in LA or in like big cities like New York and stuff, like if it's authentic, they're not going to serve. They're not going to mix it. The Even beans. within the same cuisine, like if they are really good at sushi, they're probably not going to have like katsu. You know? Yeah, I mean, unless it's a Hong Kong cafe, then they'll have everything. They'll else. literally have everything, and that's how you know it's good. Yeah. So out here, the food, the Asian food, is is shitty. So Papa found this restaurant that is pretty decent, right? It's pretty good for out here. It's pretty good. It and actually hits the spot. 
yeah, it's, it was or maybe like our standards are so low Could that be. like when we go back to like monterey park yeah we're gonna be like god damn this is a real shit but it just made me think about because we are we are thinking about moving out of state yeah that it's like damn what is what is that gonna be like because i like asian food like i love asian food i love i just like different types of cuisines but i want it to taste authentic like even out here the mexican food ain't that good yeah you know, so with like the whole like California exodus, where I think the hot spots are for sure, Idaho, Utah, Idaho, Texas, um, Colorado, Colorado, um, Idaho is one of them. And I think it's one of them because uh, it's very safe and there's low cost of housing. But the, the um, what is it called? Like low, uh, low income tax. So I think in terms of having like that nice safe suburb that a lot of people want it's there and it's not jam-packed like if you ever drive through la it's insane it takes Dude, you should see the houses like the houses out here because we've been looking at properties just out of state like i was saying like our houses are like this so if i were to open my window my neighbor opens their window we can throw shit i mean it's not here in this neighborhood but everywhere else in la it is if I were to open my window, they open up theirs. We can throw shit back and forth and never miss our windows. Yeah, the house that I lived in in Monterey Park after college, I would never let my kids ride a bike in the front yard because it's just so freaking busy. You know, there's constantly cars going up and down. They're speeding. So, like, the suburbs don't feel like a suburb. Like, mm -mm. when you watch, like, the old school 90s movies, like, Honey, I Blew Up the Kids or, like, Home Alone. You got kids playing oh, in, in a cul-de-sac. Um, it's very rare to find that, but in all these other states, and I think that's what people are looking for, that super suburby feel. So Idaho's one of them. I know Utah's one of them. You get a huge bang for your buck out there. Texas and also uh, Vegas and also even Nevada. But I think for me, because I'm like you, like Asian food is so important to me. That's why for, for me, it's either going to be Texas or Vegas because they're the only places with Bomb Asian food. And variety. Mm. You know, like Houston, it's like a huge uh Houston, Austin. You could find like Ethiopian food, you could find Asian food, Italian food. So like yeah. that variety yeah. is important to me. Because I think on the flip side, one thing when I lived in Monterey Park that I didn't like was there was just a ton of Asian, specifically Chinese food. Japanese food wasn't that good. And if you wanted to get some pasta, like some good pasta, oh, yeah, not, there. That, not really there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So then like thinking about all that. I was like, dang, what are the other things that I'm going to miss? And then I started thinking. Of LA? Well, just the areas that I grew up in. Oh, I see. So then I started thinking about just like all the wild things that happened when I used to live like with my parents yeah. in the hood. And it's just we live by different rules than we do here. You know, like this is more middle, like upper middle class city that we live in or like neighborhood that we live in. So like just the policies and procedures within the community are so different you're gonna miss the bullet holes and stuff from the hood yeah no and that stuff like that what about the art that comes out of spray cans are you gonna miss those i mean there's something about it you know like there's a whole story behind it you know so like even that like it's just interesting to to wake up and smell the fresh you know spray paint spray on your garage paint. door yeah. i know <laughs> that's so sad i feel so bad for, for it's your mom it's fucked up yeah it's it's pretty people just straight tag up your house all the time yeah i mean because there's just like gang wars right yeah. so it's like all you want to do is just tell them like this is my hood and then they scratch you out like nah fucking 187 this is my hood but it sucks that they use your guys's garage as the billboard well because they and own the city and your mom's neutral well they own the city though so that's theirs is it really your house I mean, technically, right? I almost wish like your mom put up like butcher paper and go, okay, kids, just write on this. And when you, someone crosses it out, I promise to put another sheet of brand new butcher paper yeah. so you guys can write whatever you want on there. Yeah. The other day it was nuts because, because, um, so where my parent, like where my mom's place is, there's like, it's kind of zoned for industrial. Like, mm -hmm. so she, yeah. So on the other side of her house, it's zoned for like industrial purposes. Yeah. So the factory that was there, I guess they just own the building, but they're just kind of letting it sit there. So they're just using it as like a warehouse and stuff. So people from the neighborhood or surrounding neighborhoods, they come by and then they notice that the fence is kind of open. So then they go and they start jacking shit. Oh, that's so sad. So then my brother, he hears noises, hears the dogs barking because we have, or my mom has dogs. And then he looks out there and um, I think they caught him looking. So then they just start throwing shit at the window and they like broke his window. And like, um, and what sucks about that is it's so vulnerable. They know where your brother lives now. 
So it's almost like if your brother acts out of line, they can come back and terrorize your house. It is. And it sucks because like, you know, everyone has. It was a fucking wild for me to witness a house that didn't have bars on it. Yeah. Like I didn't realize that that wasn't normal. Yeah. Like literally every house in my city had that shit. You know, so I was just like, oh, damn, OK, this is just how it is. Like even now till this day, me living because I, I grew up in a two story and it wasn't really a two story. It's just the garage is on the bottom. So it's like a one story on top of garages. Mm -hmm. I guess it's still is that considered two story? I guess it's considered okay. two story. OK, so since I lived on the second story, we still had bars, but like I felt safe because I wasn't mm. in like immediate danger because I'm not exposed to the street so if someone wanted to climb into my window for example they can't i feel way safer on the first floor well that's so me living here and hearing noises and stuff like i'm traumatized so i'm just like oh shit i feel super vulnerable because now they can come in here or but if the they shoot or they do something even though our neighborhood's so fucking safe yeah. Like I still think about these things. Yeah, but when you live on a second story and most people, it's one way up, one way down. So the minute someone is on the staircase and they occupy that space. I'm jumping have, out the window, they, dude. Out, out the second story? I don't give a fuck. You're going to break your legs. Fuck it. Okay, you're crazy because uh, they have the advantage, right? On the first floor. Why not wait? Why not jump the, out the window? On the first floor. What if you got bushes? On the first floor. Have you seen the other guys? What if you would? <laughs> but they <laughs> jumped <laughs> off. Like <laughs> <laughs> Aim for the bushes. <laughs> my hero. I love it. Aim for the bushes. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, when I saw that part, yeah. I was like, how did that? Because it was like Denzel on the rock, right? Samuel L. Jackson. Oh, right. Right, right. Why did I say that? Yeah, why did I say that? Because I think he played like a like a leather jacket wearing yeah, character. Yeah, maybe that's, I mixed it with Training Day. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's probably what you're thinking about. So then, yeah, and these are like high profile, like A-list celebrities. Yeah. So like usually when you spend money, you know, casting these actors, you want to get your money's worth. Yeah. So you want to keep them through the whole movie. Yeah, they're not going to die exactly. off. Exactly. Yeah. And that's also what I liked about Game of Thrones is like the only character that I knew, like the only actor that I knew, he dies Next like die. really fast. So yeah, it threw me off when I'm like, these are the main characters. Why would they die? They can get injured. Yeah. And I thought it was going to be one of those movies. Yeah. But the fact that they kept going down, completely missed the bushes and they just land on the fucking concrete. I was like, I love this movie. Yeah. But yeah, you don't want to jump from second story. I don't know if you've ever jumped from second story before. You can get a concussion. Probably, but it's either I'm getting raped. I'm going to die. I'm going to get tortured. Or I just fuck myself up. Or you just use. What the, if I land on a car? Or you just use the other hypothetical and be on the first story. So you don't have to jump from anywhere. Okay, you fine. Climb what, off if a I window. Have, what if I have a second story still? I'm fucked. I made the. I didn't. I didn't listen to this podcast. What I'm saying is this. You wanting to have a second story to feel more safe is not good. <laughs> no good. No good. First, I'd rather be on the first floor. If there's a fire, someone's breaking or entering. Wait. But then castles were built that way. What? Like castles were obviously all built strategically, right? right? Like that's why they have the spiral staircases because when you're on the on the first or on the second but floor. But castles aren't one way up, one way down. That's true. Yeah. Fine. They're, I hate when you're it, right. It's different. It's <sighs> different. And their castles, there's guards, right? So from a, and a, moat. From, from a place of higher elevation down, you have the advantage. So, yes, if you're sticking like a freaking crossbow out of your second store and you're always looking for bad guys, you're in a better place because you're going to see them before they see you. Right. But if you're like a normal person watching TV on the inside, the minute someone comes up the stairs and I hear that, I'm like, oh, shit, I'm fucked because I just got checkmated. I'm but they're coming up the stairs. They are, them occupying that space is, has already sealed off your exit. But you can just kick them down the stairs. You're at the top. I don't know what he has yet. I mean, you, they don't know what you have. Yeah, but his 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 chest move has already sealed off everything that I'm capable of well, doing. Well, not really because you have the advantage because you know the floor plan. They don't know the floor plan. It's kind of similar to running fucking zigzag. They don't know mm, what you're going to do. No, because uh, How ultimately... How do they know your floor plan? So ultimately, your goal in self-defense is to exit a dangerous situation. Yeah. That's your ultimate goal. Okay, well, that's out the window. So I hear stuff... On the staircase. You're going to run like a little bitch? Yep. My first. <laughs> Good for you, My baby. first go-to is, okay, let me exit this dangerous situation, right? Like you always want to put, the, the first goal of self-defense or even martial arts, you want to put distance between you and the threat. This guy, but now this range, 
is controlled by the offender. He's controlling the range. Mm. You know what I mean? It's almost like your back's against the ropes. The p- person punching you gets to choose what if, if I go back or forward and what, you don't have anywhere to go. What if you... <laughs> I was going to say something dumb. But what if you have like smoke bombs and now you've obstructed their vision? It doesn't matter because they know you still have to come down the stairs. Mm. They can see your ass. Well, you see, that's why I'm jumping out like, the fucking if window. If I was a bad guy, right? <gasps> In terms of positions, I'm on the staircase, right? Then, uh, and I see you come out about to throw a couch at me. I'm like, and you're going to just keep throwing shit down the stairs. I'm like, okay. I go down the stairs, let you throw all the shit, you empty everything out, but I still seal the bottom. I seal your only entrance way. I kind of want to act this out. So position wise, I own you and I can, I can outlast you. I'm, I'm going to keep eating food. I'll keep postmating food. I'm just waiting down there. You're going to run out of food inside of your house. You know what I mean? Like I can outlast, outlast you completely. I kind of want to act this out. I kind of want to see. I kind of want to see if I uh, could jump out the window and not and not have broken well, legs. Well, try not to jump out the window. I'll try to like, I don't know. You're gonna end up coming out. God damn it! All right. Well, you know what? I I'm don't gonna... know. Any war tacticians out there? Go ahead and comment, and and maybe there's another way that plays out. But from my understanding, they're called war tacticians. I don't know. Oh, I'm like that sounds tight as fuck. A war strategist. It's like, what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm a war tactician. AKA like a general. A sick. Well, a general's pretty tight too, but. War tactician. You know they got war schools in the military? I didn't know that, but I feel like you're going to tell me about it. But before you do that, let me pause real quick. All right, you guys, what are we having for dinner tonight? That's the age old question. And honestly, it's so stressful because it's like you've spent all day working and you spent all day putting out fires, talking to different people, finishing the project, meeting your deadlines. Finally, work is over. But now it starts all over again because it's like, I'm hungry. Your kids are hungry. You're hungry. What are you going to make? Well, our next sponsor has got you covered. That's HelloFresh. And you know how much I love HelloFresh. But if you're new here and you don't know about HelloFresh, don't worry about it because HelloFresh is going to get you fresh pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. Come on now. Like, that is so dope. It's America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh lets you skip those trips to the grocery store. It makes home cooking easy and fun. And may I mention, very affordable. I absolutely love it because I've said this time and time and time again, and I will never stop saying it. I didn't really like cooking just because I was intimidated by it. But hello and behold, enters HelloFresh into my life. They come with the pre-measured ingredients and these amazing, amazing mouth-watering recipes. And it tells you step-by-step step how to prepare these uh, these uh, recipes. And little by little, I started getting more and more comfortable being in the kitchen and trying different ingredients, making different dishes. And now I just, I'm addicted. I love it. It's, it's so much fun. I get my son involved. My husband does it. Sometimes we add our own little twist to it. But the best part is all the ingredients get shipped to your front door. And don't worry, if you're going to be out of town, you can schedule and you can skip a week. It's so affordable. It's so easy to use. I absolutely love it. So save time, save money, and absolutely save the stress, you guys. And for everyone listening right now, we have you covered. Make sure to go to HelloFresh.com slash 80 bell and use code 80 bell to get a total of $80 off your first month, including free shipping on your first box. Additional restrictions apply. So make sure to please visit HelloFresh.com for more details. Again, go to HelloFresh.com slash 80 bell and use code 80 bell to get a total of $80 off your first month, including free shipping. And yeah. we're back. Yeah, they have, uh, they actually, so they have like military universities and academies and a lot of like the higher rank officers have to go to them to learn war strategy and you can get like a master's in war. It's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah, I like this quote. I don't know if it's really going to fit with everything we're talking about, but you just made me think about it. It's uh, all wars have been, or most wars are, win- are won in the tent, like strategizing. So it's like, you can go out are there. Are you sure that's the quote? Some, I mean, something to the effect. <laughs> Something to that effect. I'm pretty sure the quote is something like, most wars are won before they're fought. No, no, no. That's not it. <laughs> I don't know if it's that specific to a tent. <laughs> like, I'm just saying. Most wars are 
Taiwan. I'm going to fuck you up. In a tent. <laughs> yeah, that's what it says. Wars, Wars are, are won in the general's tent. Suck a dick. Okay, general's Bart. tent. That sounds more All epic. Oh, you fucking <laughs> asshole. So you're going to Most be- wars are won in a vest. Wear a vest. <laughs> I fucking hate you. Okay, a general's tent. I'm just saying, like, practice. Yeah. You practice, you strategize before you go out there and you don't know what the fuck you're doing. That you're reminds such me a of, fucking that, Asperger's. That, that reminds me of a quote that I really like. Uh, and they uh, they once asked Abraham Lincoln, if you had four hours to cut down a tree, what do you do? What did he say? I spend three hours sharpening my axe. That's just stupid. That's dope. I'm so just kidding. It's the success of your execution. Most of it is in the planning. And that's Same why. Like, thing. Yeah. And that's why, like, you know, when you like all these fighters and stuff. They train for like, I don't know, 12, 14 week camps. And it's intentional training yeah, too. It's for, not just like. For like five minutes of action. I know. It's not like going with the motions. I was listening to Joe Rogan talk about it. And he was saying like. Who's um, Joe Rogan? You know my buddy Joe. Oh, okay. Cool. I've heard of him. Okay, cool. So he was just talking about like how he was able to advance to becoming a blue belt so quickly. Uh, one, obviously he was saying like, you know, you you start going up the ranks higher when you can start teaching other people because you're just constantly practicing it and you're also dissecting it to so that other people it's so it's more palatable for other people but in you having to do that you have to know it really really Made well. it more so, digestible yeah but then he said what really excelled his progress was the fact that um when what's what are the, like the drills because yeah. drills you're doing it by yourself right yeah. so you have to like you know like i don't i don't know the actual technical terms for things but yeah. drilling basically when you're doing it by yourself he said he would really try to picture his opponent and he was really trying to do it and he goes that's the part that everyone hates that's yeah. the mundane shit it's that's boring the stuff. and repetitive exactly he's like that's the stuff that no one that people just go through the motions because they're told they have to do it but it's boring it's too repetitive it's mundane nobody wants to do it but he was like that right there is what got me a hundred like it just it, I got exponentially better because it was intentional and I was focused. And every time I did something, I imagined my like me actually doing it with an opponent. That's what I'm going through right now. Like I'm taking jujitsu twice a week. And so like in the beginning of the class, it's a lot of drilling. So the same move over and over and over again. And when you think you like I got the move. Yeah. You'll always have more epiphany moments, you know, and you're like, oh, shoot, I never thought about this way. Oh, yeah. I can do it this way. Yeah. And it becomes more and more efficient. And then when we actually do our roles at the end, which is like the grappling version of sparring, yeah, a position will present itself, and I'm like, oh, cool, there it is, you know, and boom, and I get to there it is, there it is. Sorry, when to, we when we start like saying these things, like these little inside jokes, it's literally all, oh my groin, what happened? I had jujitsu today, and then they cramped right now because I was trying to cross my legs. I don't think I've ever had my groin cramp. Is oh. it like your choke? No, you're gonna. It's my little groin. You're you're gonna a little groin. That's fucking cute. my literal groin. Oh, literal. You're, you're literally gonna have groin cramps because you're. It's like you know the muscles. You know that stupid machine that everyone makes fun of at the gym that goes like this. Yeah. And when you look at him, like, what the hell is the use for that? That thing is so. I think good. only guys think that. Really? Yeah. Oh. Well, because girls understand where it's like, it's it's doing like your outer thighs. No, this one's for the inner and your, thighs and your inner thighs. Yeah. So this is really helpful for jujitsu because you have to you pretty much use your legs like arms. And since you're not used to like me, uh, my freaking groin just cramped right now. Ow. OK, what was I saying? Um, something was it about jujitsu. Oh, I was talking about the inside joke. But yeah, I think it was. Yeah. So if you hear us have an inside joke, it's usually 100 percent revolved around Taika. We or love something. him so much. Yeah, that he does. Um, but what were we saying before that? I was just about Joe Rogan and Blue Bell and the drilling and stuff. Oh, right. Yeah, because it's super mundane. Yeah. I mean, I just heard that. Oh, another thing. That's where I was headed at. Yeah, that I've noticed that at least when I was playing competitive sports, it's yeah, you have your drilling and you have your practice. But then I think just having playing out scenarios in your head helps you a lot too. Oh yeah. Like I didn't realize how much it would help my game. Cause it's like uh like I'm not practicing anymore or I'm at work or I'm like studying because i was going to college at, at the time but i'm doing something that's not centered around play but i'm i'm literally playing a game in my head yeah i think uh mm -hmm. you know when you see mm -hmm. basketball players like they're like like pretending like they're dribbling and there's like oh shoot oh, oh spin around oh 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 they're gonna go up. oh no, they're gonna block me oh you know like finger roll like they're almost pretending like someone's guarding them mm -hmm. and they're responding mm -hmm. and it's through that constant repetition of all these imaginary scenarios 
that you get better because when that happens in real life, you already ha- created a plan for it. You know, I do that too when it comes to like emergency situations. Like you go, okay, put the tampon from the left hand to the right hand like that and shove it in there. No, like if someone were to break in the house, like what do I do? What yeah. are my first moves, you know? So I like, I already know what I'm going to do. And well, I've in the second always, story, I know you're jumping out. <laughs> I've always done this ever since I was a little kid. And I like knew about like, I don't know, predatory behavior, I guess. Mm-hmm is I would play out different scenarios. So even when I was a little ass kid and I used to fit underneath the bed, like I would think of just different hiding places because I just didn't understand, like I didn't know about weapon usage and stuff like that. Like that's how little I was. So I'm like, shit, if some shit were to go down right now, where do I hide? So I knew all my hiding places, even now, like if some shit were to hit the fan and I'm in this particular room, where are my next three steps? What do I do? Yeah. I think that way all the time. For me, it's, uh, I think nine times out of 10, my go to is pushing people's eyeballs into the back of their brains. Oh, shit. Well, for me, nine times out of 10, it's definitely getting something. Like, that if, can, my, like if I feel like my life's threatened or if I'm like, oh, shoot, this in this specific hypothetical scenario, my life is going to be threatened. Um, what do I do? It's pushing someone's eyeballs with both of my hands into the brains because. Well, of- I, I'm, I'm I don't go that it doesn't get that intimate for me. Like, I'm already trying to avoid having any sort of connect like touching them like that's already too close i'm fucked i see for me it's like i hear something i'm already thinking of shadows where the light's coming from i'm thinking of all that shit i'm thinking of element of surprise speed of action and the most violent execution of said plan ever oh shit yeah difference between guys and girls and that's because it's rapid you know if it's like a a choreographed strategy like I hear someone, we're in another room. I'm like, oh shoot, Tyco's with me, Ma Bear's with me. Oh, oh, I hear someone else. Then I gotta think of like something smart. I gotta be a tactician, you know. Oh, then but, maybe I'm the tactician. But if not, if it's not something that I need to strategize, and it's literally like, um, like let's say we're eating at a restaurant and there's just a guy pops out of from the side. <laughs> My first thing is he's like a magician. Maybe, or, you know, just people that, like, show up, like, you know, th- that actually happened a lot back in the day. Like, we would eat at these Hong Kong cafes, speaking of Hong Kong cafes. And we're back to the topic. Yeah, and then, like, the rival gang would show up. You know, they just pop up, and you're, you're with their boys, and then you're like, oh, shit, it's going to be, like, it's a Mexican standoff, because there's literally, like, three gangs that... Why do they call it a Mexican standoff? I don't know, but the definition is when there's... I know what it means. I know what it means. It's a three-way thing. Well, it's not a three-way. It could be one-on-one. It could just be this way. Oh, that's still Mexican standoff? Yeah. Oh, I thought Mexican standoff when it was like three-way. Let me look it up, but continue. Yeah. Um, yeah, so like um, they would show up and you're literally like, oh, shit, what's going to happen? You know, because yeah. like do two people ally and then take out the third one? Like what happens? But yeah, for for me, violence, um, like, gen, you know, General Patton, I believe he said this. Lots of quotes in this episode, by the way. I think General Patton says a plan executed rapidly and violently is better than a uh, well thought out well thought out plan something like that well i'm glad you're tent. he also included tent in that phrase that's nice was it a general's tent or just a regular tent oh for sure general's tent. Oh, okay, you, can't, you can't fit a table in a regular tent oh true it's really small yeah oh, i fucking hate you but okay this is a mexican <laughs> standoff i still don't know why it's called the mexican standoff but it says a mexican standoff is a confrontation in which no strategy exists that allows any party to achieve victory so it didn't really say the number of people it says any uh, party initiating aggression might trigger their own demise. At the same time, oh. the parties are unable to um, ex- extricate. What the hell is that? Extricate themselves from the situation without suffering a loss. So it's literally like a. Um, it's just this to this. It could be a bunch yeah. of people. You could, yeah. Like another episode of The Office. Oh yeah, it's like a double, triple. <laughs> they had their fake gun. Checkmate. It's like double checkmate. Yeah, or yeah. more eight checkmates. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. I like in movies when they have that, where they're yeah. both pointing guns at each other. They're yeah. like this, go put your, put your pair on my head. And then they click it, and there's no more fucking bullets, and they go... Yeah, that's always fun. I love choreography like that. Uh, So the reason why I even like initially brought up the Hong Kong cafe situation was because like I was thinking about like just... And I, I kind of vaguely touched on this earlier. It was just things that I miss about just kind of living amongst, you know, like hood folk like it's just a different it's just a different set of rules and and sometimes i really appreciate and i like it 
And then just living out here where we're like upper middle class, it's a different set of rules that I also appreciate and like. So for example, like when I was growing up, no way in a fucking million years, you never call the cops. You never call the fucking cops. Not because you're a rat. Well, I mean, that's partially it, but also because it's like, we knew back then, at least like in the 90s, cops ain't doing shit. Yeah, they and don't be- have your best interest in mind. Right. And because you're a minority, unfortunately, you're just as guilty as the guilty person. Yeah, you're already guilty. Yeah. And then the shit that would happen was like, they'd be like, um, they start interrogating you as if you're guilty, as if you like. So I'm kind of like sidetracking here, but shit like that is stuff I really liked. That's you know? also that you like that. I did because then it's like. It's like you can have loud ass parties. Oh, I see. Ain't nobody calling shit. There's on almost you. no rules. It's like being in the jungle. Exactly. Yeah, I think um, things have changed a lot. I think cops have changed, and that's for sure how it was back in the nineties. But these days, like I love our cops in our neighborhood. You know, there's a couple of times where there was like some things that happened, and we call, and they're like there in like three minutes. Yeah, and they're I'm super like, informational, and like they have all of our best. And I'm in a mind. minority, and uh, it didn't it feel weird because you were like, it's like this, like. And they didn't make me. They didn't make me feel like I was yeah. wrong or anything like that. Like there's times, even so, I, I know cops. A lot of police departments have made tremendous effort to better their relations with the communities that they serve. And now we know. I mean, now we know better, especially from the '90s until now. But um, one thing that was really surprising with me was even I think in Monterey Park, where it was just like ten thousand. I mean, just ten years after like the whole <laughs> gang gang wars time. There's times where like I call the cops and the cops come and they go, you sir, stand right there. So because they don't know what happened, they're also just trying to neutralize the situation, which I get it. Um, And so that there is a part of you that go, wait, I'm the one that called it. Why are you treating me like this? But I get they just need to be in control of the situation before anything else happens. Yeah. But what was really cool is when the last time we called the cops here, when we had that one fire on the side, that guy came. He didn't make me go, hey, show me your hands real quick. I was just carrying a shovel because I didn't know what was going on over there. So I thought I had to put like put the fire out, but it could be considered a weapon, especially at night. And he didn't go show me your hands or anything like well, that. Well, yeah, this area isn't also known for having like, you know, for being like that. But I'm like, also being hostile. But like I'm also that. a minority, so I'm used to that. You know, I'm used to people seeing me and immediately like feeling a certain way. But you're but Asian branding has also changed a lot. Asian, but also Asian with tattoos in the sixty six oh. don't it, they don't really necessarily get treated the best too. You know, so. But that's but the sixty six is such a small pocket. But we are in the sixty six right now. Is this the sixty six? Yeah. Oh shit. So that's All why right. I was just very. I didn't know that. I was just very very surprised, and it felt good that I'm like. Oh, so this is the benefit of tax dollars. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've been paying tax my whole life. Now I actually feel protected. Dude, prote- I call the cops all the fucking time. Uh, right now I feel protected, you know? I love it. Like, so we'll have like transients and shit come here and they usually are on drugs. So like if, if a homeless person wants to come by and like seek some sort of shelter to just rest a little bit, I don't really care if they're not like messing with the neighborhood. Trying to set a fire. Yeah. But then the ones that do come here, they're belligerent. Or they're like, yeah, what was that one time? Like, fuck what? He was yelling some crazy shit. Oh, the, the, was it the guy that went out to go talk to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was yelling Oh, something. he said, uh, fuck the FBI. <laughs> oh, right. He kept saying, fuck the FBI and stuff. And we're like, what the hell? And now I'm calling the cops all the time. No shame. I'm just like, hey, there's a suspicious car. And like within three minutes, they check it out. And they're like, nah, it's cool. Well, what do you like, though? You like living in the hood where it's no rules and you can have it's crazy different. parties? Or do you like it where it's like That's all my order point. Like it's this? different, right? Because also in the hood, you have all like the street vendors come by. Like when did we had a fucking paletero or the fucking elote man come out here? Does the ice cream man even come around here? No, I hear it. Well, we can go to ice cream store. I mean, it ain't the same, though. I, I want know. the fucking Sonic the Hedgehog fucking face. With that has the gum eyes that's like all crooked because it was obviously melted and then it froze again. Like I miss that shit. You know, I love that you can get ice cream, but you can also buy lottery tickets and you can get some fruit all at the same spot. Why don't we just go to your mom's house and we can. I'm not looking for solutions. I'm just saying what I miss. I see. That's all. I'm just saying like it just has its pros and cons, you know? Yeah, I don't miss any of that at all. Really? Like your neighbors? Oh, I mean, did you grow up like that? Um, I didn't, but my dad's neighborhood is kind of like that. The, the most that I can relate to. And I don't miss random dogs chasing me when I'm jogging. I don't miss like 4 a.m. people bumping music. But then you can also bump music. But I don't want to because I like sleeping. So I don't miss the 4 a.m. music bumping. I don't miss um, coming Did out. a lot of fights go down for you? 
not in, not not in the city. No, it happened more at school uh, and stuff. But I didn't. I don't miss. Um, okay, my shit was way more. I don't, yeah, I don't miss my car always being opened up and things getting taken out of it, burglarized constantly. Dude, it's I don't been, miss that. I remember one time I was like, maybe eight or nine, and like I was playing outside. You know my mom's front house. So before it became concrete and people started parking the car there, not on the grass. It, we did have grass. And then she has like that wall of trees. Yeah. So I remember just playing out there and stuff. And like, I guess I went inside to get a toy or something. I come back outside and the cops are kind of everywhere. And I'm just like uh, completely oblivious. I was just like, oh shit, cops, that's crazy. And then I'm just still playing. And out of those bushes within my yard, a fucking guy runs out and he's Whoa. just running away from the cops. See, I don't he miss was that. hiding out in our yard. I don't miss that. Uh, that's that's one thing in Almani. Almost like every every week, every month, uh, I'm like on I'm like up watching TV or something, and you know when the helicopter goes. Oh yeah, that's a nightmare. There's a fugitive. The bird. Yeah, there's there's a fugitive walking to stay, stay in your inside. House. Yeah, and there's fucking lights going all over the place. This guy's armed and dangerous. I don't miss constant interruptions of like i really love how quiet it is it's That's just chill true. i can predict i tycon can go outside and i'm not scared he's gonna get run over or bit by a dog or you know what else i miss i miss uh my neighbors not doing jack shit because they're all on welfare yeah so everyone just kicked it and just shot the shit like everyone's kicking it by the fence talk to them in front of their projects yeah like oh, our, our next door neighbor, like we all grew up together. Yeah. I mean, they weren't like my tightest homies because my mom just didn't want me hanging out with them. But yeah. we knew enough about each other. And it was mainly my older sister, and my older brother that grew up with them because they went to the same school. But like just them hanging by the fence and stuff like you just hear like the block cheese man, you know, oh, like so and so did this. And this person over here, Jack, this person and this fool has like baby drama, baby mama drama. And like you just know everything that's happening in the hood. Yeah. Like in that, like in your neighborhood. Do I know people like that? No. Nope. I liked it because it was just like everyone knew like if you. It if felt like were, a little community, huh? like a little yeah. like a center, like a little community center. Yeah. And it was tight because like whenever they would rob, <laughs> rob our house. <laughs> like, They're robbing your house? Not them. Not them. But like when it would get robbed. Yeah. They knew who it was. And we even knew those people. But we were just like, all right, fuck it. Because he would just break into my dad's like garage not into our house how house. sad it is it is pretty fucked up but you're just like these fools are down and out like so that's not the block that i like because at least um there's no honor for sure yeah i'd rather have it where like we protect this block from other people come from coming in so everyone nah, it's, here it's doggy dog yeah everyone here we we got it covered you know yeah i'd rather have that yeah and if you're cool with them they'll tell you what they saw but if they don't know you and you're not that cool they didn't see shit yeah nobody knows nothing yeah, I don't miss any of that at all. Isn't that crazy? Like a lot of times, like the older I get, the more lifetimes I feel like I've lived. You know? How many? How many think you've lived? So I think there's the cute Bart. Well, I, I don't know if I was ever that cute, but I was like really mischievous Bart. So I was already like a curious troublemaker Bart, and then I went through like a, a gangster Bart phase, and then I went through through like a raver Bart phase, and the raver Bart and gangster Bart they're like pretty close to each other, kind of. It's just different dress um dressed a little bit different and then also like approach is a little bit different like one guy like wants to fight all the time and like the other one's all about plur about plur and just wants to have a good time and meet friends and socialize i had networked a lot during the rave days and then what does that mean network i know what networking means but what does that mean in like um i just made friends from all over the place oh i see you know when you go to those raves there's like people from like three hours away two hours away people from the same city oh so you okay like me and Joe are from the same city and I'm surprised we never even met each other. You We're probably there. did, but you guys were both fucked up, I bet. Maybe. And then, yeah, and then I, and then Bart became a Marine and then there's... Oh, true. And then there's like college boy Bart, which is kind of like Marine Bart a little bit. And then there's like um, startup Bart, you know? And then because that's there's way Uncle different. There's Uncle Sam Bart. And that's Sam. a very different guy. Yeah, and there's like startup Bart... And then from startup Bart, there's stand up uh, comedy Bart. Yeah. And that, that's a different guy. Yeah. And then it became um, like business owner Bart. And then, you know, and then now there's like dad Bart. So it's crazy. Like it's just. And every, husband Bart. And husband Bart. You know, there's like all these crazy periods that you think about. And I'm like, man, those are like complete. Like, like if people that I meet now, like there's a lot of people that I meet right now that are like, um, they're like in the military right now. You know, like, hey, Bart. Oh, cool. Like you serve. Thank you for your service. I'm like, dude, thank you for your service. And then they'll ask me questions about the military. 
And half the times I feel bad, I don't even remember because it's over 10 years ago, you know, but I just look young, but I got out in like 2009. So they asked me questions and I'm like, you know, half the terminology, I, I barely remember. I don't remember a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's crazy. I don't know if I've lived that many lives. I think my mind has definitely developed a lot. But I don't know if like, because you've had a lot of physical changes, right? Like yeah. whether that's like in the clothes you were wearing, you know, like that changed for you drastically. But I don't think I don't think I have that many lives. So happy to be working with our next sponsor, Felix Gray. They make some of the best blue light filtering glasses on the market because not only do they look dope as hell, they actually work really, really well by filtering out 90% of blue light in most damaging range and eliminates 99% of glare through a proprietary industry leading lens technology only available with the Felix Gray. And if you're like, well, I don't know, I, blue light doesn't affect me, I never see it. Well, it does affect you. Actually, a lot of popular devices um, are a major source of blue light. So I'm talking about phones, tablets, computers, TV, Kindles, and other devices. And if you've ever felt that your eyes are just, like if you get headaches or you have blurry vision, dry eyes, tired eyes, um, you're having trouble sleeping, that's all due to the exposure of blue light at night. And that can also lower your production of melatonin and melatonin is a hormone that regulates sleep. So right now, it's actually causing more bad than good, but Felix Gray is here to help you. So make sure to go to felixgrayglasses.com slash pick'em for the absolute best quality blue light filtering glasses on the market. That's Felix Gray, F-E-L-I-X-G-R-A-Y glasses.com slash pick'em, P-I-C-K-E-M. Shipping and returns are totally free and Felix um, are totally free at Felix Gray. So make sure to go to FelixGrayGlasses.com slash pick'em. P-I-C-K-E-M. Do you pursue changes? Um, I say yes. I say I do. I try to get myself out of my comfort zone all the time. Mm. Like starting from an early age, you know, like everyone is dependent on their parents. I was like, let me sell shit at school and make my own money. Yeah. Um, they wanted to stay in their neighborhood because it's that's their bubble, that's their friends. I'm like, yo, let me go to a four cities over where I don't even understand the language because I just want to be exposed to different things. Yeah. Like I tried to do things that were that like within- That was K-Town period, right? Yeah, that were within my grasp because my parents were just so, um, so scared of me just being around bad influences. But I did everything I possibly could to like get myself out of it. So I, I think I pursue change pretty heavily. Like yeah. we're leaving the fucking state. I think that's major. That, My whole that, family's here. Yeah, you know, it's crazy when I think about it. I'm like, it sounds crazy, right? Because most people don't just up and leave. Mm -hmm. But then I'm like, but our parents did that. You know, like our parents yeah. were like, I think we can live a better life there. Yeah. So they moved from China and they moved from Mexico. But, but that's a little bit different, right? Because they're going from a really bad situation. Yeah to a better situation for their future. Whereas for us, we're in a great situation. We are, but I think- So, so that's why I think the it's crazy. The circumstances are different, but the motivation is the same. It's, I want a better life. Yes, but I think the circum circumstances carries way, way more weight. It does. And it's definitely way more, um, what is it called? Like, like a life or death, you right. know? But I think um, the part that makes me feel like it's, it's normalized is that- the whole world is constantly a shifting place. You know, people are moving here, moving there. Like what works better here works better there. What do you mean it's, it's normalized? What's normalized? Us moving to another state. That is is not, it normalized? Like when you really think about it. I don't think it's it, normalized if people are going, whoa, that's crazy. I don't think it's normalized. It's normalized to me. Oh, because that's it, different. Because uh, people move all the time and people are always seeking better options. Like, you know, like. But people changing, don't move all the time. Changing that's jobs. Why they don't. Because if you think about it. You buy a, a more or you you apply for a mortgage that's 30 years. Those people do. That's a the, that's the majority. There's also a lot of people that move all the time. There is a lot of people, but I'm saying the majority. Yeah. They don't move. I guess the I mean it really depends on what you mean by majority. There's a majority also don't even buy homes too. Right. In LA. I mean, I think you're just now getting nitty gritty. I'm just saying the majority I think that's why even our own peers think we're crazy because we're not doing things the normal way. 
Mm-hmm. It just seems ridiculous. Maybe that's part like, of the Asperger's kicking in because I look at them and I'm like, you're crazy because you know how much we're going to save. It is the Asperger's. So I'm like, I know how I'm going to save. I know how much you're going to save. Why aren't you moving? Yeah, because you're only looking at numbers, yeah. whereas they're looking at probably numbers, but the emotional toll is way greater. Yeah. Because they're like, I have family here. My roots are here. Me like, too. You don't give up. Ugh. I do. No, you don't. I wish all my family moved to Vegas too. No, you don't. Yeah. But I mean, they are moving to Vegas. But your family too. I wish everyone, all, all my friends too. I wish all my friends moving oh. to Vegas. Yeah. Well, I mean, whatever needs to happen will happen. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I I really do enjoy change a lot. Me too. I really do. I like. I don't know. I just feel like. And I don't want to sound like sappy and shit because I don't. I don't really consciously say this in my mind. You know, I'm only doing it for the sake of this explanation. But life is so short. Like I don't do sit it there. all. Yeah, I don't sit there and go, Geo, life is short, do it. It's more like my motto has always been like, fuck it, let's do it. Yeah. You know, and I think that's Sakuraka. my way. Sakuraka. Yeah, I think that's my way of of subconsciously saying like, hey, life is short. You know, like I know nothing is forever. I think the only thing, not I think, but I know the only thing that's guaranteed in this, in this life is that we're going to die. So everything else is not constant. Everything else doesn't, you know, it's not forever. So why not just, try different things have a good time yeah yeah so it's like dim some life a little bit like i love this place i love this house i love everything about this but i'm like well let me set my 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 generation my you know the following generation up and then i get new experiences i get to see what life outside of cali is going to be like and i never thought i would ever leave here me neither i always thought california is the best i still think it's the best it's just the the taxes are the best just the time right now is just not the best yeah for us, for our particular situation and where we want to be in five, 10 years. So, you know, what's crazy is just like maybe even 30, 40 years ago, Cali wasn't the best. You know, like if you went up and down PCH where all the homes are at least two, three, four, five million now, they were cheap. They were giving away land. It was almost like like the beach was like like farmland, like Bakersfield. Yeah. You know? I remember watching that documentary. Uh, I think it was like a surf documentary. And like they were showing up this family that bought a house 30, 40 years ago. And they bought it dirt dirt cheap because it cheap. was the ghetto. Yeah. And it's like fucking beachfront house. Yeah. And that's what, that's what I mean. Like where I think it's kind of normalized and the migration constantly happens. It's um, because you, we grew up or most Californians grew up knowing and feeling like California is the shit. Um, it's hard to grasp the concept that it's the, it's a time for another state to be the shit. Yeah. And it's then, really hard. Because there's so many there with the big California exodus. There are a lot of people leaving California. So I don't know which next state is going to be the shit, but um, it, it rises and falls. You know, like California wasn't always the shit. It became the shit. And then it always changes and fluctuates and stuff. Yeah. Again, nothing's constant. Nothing is forever. But yeah, what made you ask me that question? Which question? If I like change. Oh, just because uh, I realized just talking about the whole lifetimes and stuff. Like I realized I really like change and I really like to subject myself to change. So it was almost like... Um, it wasn't even like I make it organic. Like I'm very proactive with it. You know, like when I got kicked out of school and I was with my gang stuff, it wasn't like through some gang friends I met some ravers. It was literally like, I want to be a raver now. Oh, shit. And I just change it. I change my friends. I go to rave stuff. And then like I'm in the middle of college. It's not like I grew up in a military family or anything. It was just like, I want to be a Marine. Yeah. And I just sign up for it and I just go do it. You know, so like it, it's... It's never been like, oh, yeah, my God, my, my family is military, so I'm going to join the military. It's not a very organic thing. So I, I think I like to subject myself to pretty inorganic changes, but it makes me feel good because I think I learn things about myself. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, how much can you learn if you're in the same pl- Like, if you're in your bubble. Yeah. Like, we've seen the products of our environment, right? Like, if I stayed in the hood, no offense to anyone living in the hood at all. It just wasn't for me. Yeah. Like... I just like I, luckily for me and my situation, my parents put me in a different school district. Mm-hmm. So I was exposed to just a different caliber of person and a different perspective because they weren't lower income p- kids. You know, they were middle class, upper middle class. So just how they viewed p- problems or how they solved problems or just what their problems were, were just completely different. You know, like I'd go to their house and I'm like, oh, shit, you don't have bars. It's Mm. fucking wild. Yeah. You know? So then once I got a taste of that, I'm like that. I want that. That's cute. So I I got really fortunate that I was exposed to different things. And that was something that I really tried to teach my parents because 
out of the four kids, I'm number three. So I have a little sister. And when she was growing up, like my parents, you know, they were busy. They worked full time. So I was really raised by my oldest sister. So I would consider her my mom at this point. Um, They just had to raise us the same exact way. So it didn't like they didn't have time to have like the fucking what is it like the Bob Saget full house dad that can sit there and it's like, all right, Gio, like what happened at school today? Like we just didn't bond like that. There just wasn't time. So like they raised my sister, they instilled all morals and shit into her. She just passed it down to us. So then when I saw it going to my little sister and how like she was going to be put in a bubble again, I kept telling my my dad specifically because, you know, in our house, it was very patriarchal. And I was just telling him like, hey, you have to let us go to school out of state, not because we want to be promiscuous and have fucking sex orgy parties. It's because I feel like or I know for a fact that she's just going to it's just going to expand her horizon. I actually prefer for Taika to go to school out of state when it's time for him to go to college. <laughs> I don't want to think about <laughs> bikini. No, I do too. Because I, I think it really, like, it really, like, I almost and it makes you self sufficient. I almost wish that I went to school out of state, um, but uh, I, I didn't. But I, I, I think it's really cool because you just get to meet, like, not just people from other walks of life, but you get to live another walk of life. You know, like, imagine, like, if you're if you if you're used to the big wide suburbs of LA and you go to NYU and now you got to take the subway you know and you understand city life you have to life. fend for yourself yeah and it's like a you're you're used to walking and eating you know and it's like it's and it's it's normal to eat by yourself versus in LA it's almost like if you're that one person eating by yourself in a restaurant like Joe like it's so weird you know because <laughs> i love him i gotta put him on the bus but he had nothing to do with this <laughs> the know, whole like, episode he's like, watch his watching this by himself hey. like hey at the restaurant yeah yeah so like i um i think that's um it's such a good like i almost wish wished i went active duty too you know as a reservist there's just so many things i think like being able to be thrown in another environment yeah and, like how do you react are you gonna sink or swim baby i love that shit yeah even with like you know powerlifting like that was me intentionally. It wasn't like we're at LA Fitness and then or twenty four hour, and I'm like, oh, are you a powerlifter? I remember the conversation. Someone, You're like, man, I miss competing. Let me see what's happening. Oh, there's this thing called powerlifting. Okay, I'm gonna wear trash bags and start weight cutting. And I'm like, yeah, I was like, I'm, fuck? let's just do it. And then I'm like, oh shit, I got to squat. Well, I guess I got three weeks to learn how to squat then. And it was just I loved subjecting myself to just things because you just learn so much, and then that became such a core part of my training. Whereas before I was more of like like a more fitness circuit, bodybuilding style training. And then now I'm like, I don't care about that. I, really, I want just absolute strength so I can crush people's balls. Wow. That's kind of hot. Not balls, but like, you know, eyeballs. Yeah. Oh, I was thinking the other balls. Well, yeah, that's where that's where we're at. And I really like that. And well, I, where are we at? at? Where we're the pursuers of change. Yeah. We're in the middle of life. We're in the middle of of a journey and we packed our camel caravan and we are starting a new life in another state which I love is pretty it. crazy and who knows how long we'll stay there yeah who knows it's pretty who cool who knows though. only only time only will tell only you all right y'all on that note i want to thank you guys for making it this far and listening to us i absolutely adore you guys and um i want you to know that you're a beautiful person yep you know what else is beautiful our sponsor. So I want to say a huge thank you to Felix Gray Glasses dot com. Slap what the fuck? And I want to say thank you to our sponsor, Felix Gray. Make sure to visit Felix Gray Glasses dot com slash bear for the absolute best quality blue light filtering glasses on the market. That's Felix Gray. That's F E L I X G R A Y Glasses dot com slash bear. So don't miss out, you guys. And don't forget to check out barbellbrigade.com. We're about to drop our next collection, the Dominate Humbly collection. Ooh. That is the motto that a lot of people identify with with the Barbell Brigade brand because we always want to put ourselves through humbling pursuits and dominate them and grow and become a better person. So make sure you check that out. It's dropping very soon in about two weeks. So check that out. Thank you very much. Bye.